If you're a coach or consultant or course creator and you wanna look like a pro on your Zoom calls or your video interviews, this video is for you. I'm gonna break down everything you need to elevate your expert status on video calls and look like the professional that you are. Now, sometimes people ask why, like why waste the money to look good on just Zoom calls or video calls? Well, it kind of depends because if you're someone who uses online content to attract more leads and clients, this can be a great way to leverage something you're already doing and repurpose longer form conversations into shorter clips and post them on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, etc. So if that's not you, then yeah, it probably doesn't make sense to upgrade your camera and, and get some of this equipment. But if you are a course creator, a coach, a consultant, someone who creates online content, someone who has interviews or goes on podcasts or things like that, or if you just want a nice setup, because not only can you use this for interviews and, and online calls, but you can also use this just to film uh, content directly to your camera or computer. Now, first I wanna mention that you can do exactly what I lay out in this video and still look like an amateur if your lighting, your positioning, and your background sucks. So I'm not gonna cover all of that in this video, but I do have a free training video where I lay all that stuff out for you step-by-step. Step. So head over to glacierrockmedia.com forward slash studio and grab that free training if you need help with that. So the first thing that you need is a decent camera with a nice lens. Now you don't need the best camera in the world and actually the lens is more important than the camera itself. The camera, we call it the body. The camera body needs to have a few things in order to work with this. The most important thing is it needs to send clean HDMI. So there are some cameras out there, especially some like prosumer or kind of the lower end, especially Canon is, is renowned for this. The cameras cannot send a clean HDMI signal. So what that means is when you plug an HDMI cable into it, everything you see on the screen behind it is transmitted into the signal that you're sending to your computer. So we need to make sure that the camera can send clean HDMI where the signal that it sends out does not have all that stuff on there. Otherwise, this just isn't gonna work. So I'll link to a page where you can go that lists out a whole bunch of camera options that do work. But there is a camera that I recommend and I will link to that in the description and I'm gonna talk about it here in a minute. And then the other thing you wanna make sure the camera has is an external mic port. Even if you're not gonna use an external mic direct to the camera for this purpose, you wanna make sure that you're future-proofing what you have so that if you go to shoot videos in another location or for whatever reason, you might wanna plug a mic directly into the camera, you'll have that ability to do that. So there are a ton of options out there when it comes to cameras, and a lot of them will work. But what I like to recommend, my favorite combo for this situation is the Sony ZV-E10 with either a Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4, a Sigma 20 millimeter 1.4, or a Sigma 24 millimeter 1.4. And we don't need to nerd out and go into all the details. A lot of videos are like, let me teach you what these things mean. No one cares, you don't need to know. But the millimeter is, is like how zoomed in or zoomed out it is. So the smaller the number, we call it the wider it is or the more zoomed out it's gonna be. And then the bigger the number, the more zoomed in it's gonna be. So what to get depends a little bit on how far the camera is gonna be on your desk. What I wanna do is get the biggest number possible for my setup because again, to spare you the nerdy details, the larger the millimeter, the more uh, flattering the image or just the, the better the image looks. And as you get to those lower numbers, the wider shots, uh, it starts to distort a little bit, especially around the edges. But sometimes just because of your desk setup or, or your room, you need that 16 in order to, to get it wide enough to capture everything we need for the video. So you might need a 16. Uh, if you got a little bit more space, a 20 might work. Um, and then if you've got even more space, a 24. So I've got a 24 on mine and my camera is about an arm and a half length away. I guess that doesn't really help you because you don't know how long my arm is, but it's probably like two and a half or three feet from my face. Now the 1.4, that part is really important. Again, I don't want to nerd out. It doesn't really matter what all this stuff means. You just need to know what to get. And the 1.4 is the f-stop or the aperture. And it's that number that tells us how blurry the background can get essentially. So the lower the number, the more depth of field, we call that, that the lens has the ability to give you. And so the thing that it's focused on will be in focus and everything else, especially the further away it is from you, will be blurry. So if you want that beautiful blurry background, get a lens that has 1.4 f-stop, especially if you're gonna get a wider lens like a 16 or the 20. Another lens that might work is a 35 millimeter, but typically that's only an option if the camera can be just a little bit further away because it's, it's a little bit more zoomed in, but that is a really nice looking lens. But a 35 creates a really nice picture. So if it works in your space, then definitely get a 35. 
What I tend to recommend if you're not sure is get what's called the kit lens. Or if you buy this camera, get it with the kit lens. And that lens zooms from a 16 to like a 50 or 55 or something like that. Then what you can do is put it on the camera, get it all set up where it's going to be in your space, and then zoom to the perfect amount, you know, right where it needs to be. Look at what that number is and then get a lens that's closest to that. So for me, where my camera has to sit, a 24 is perfect. The other thing that that low f-stop gives us is more light capability. It's kind of like your pupil of your eye, where the bigger it is, the more light it lets in. That's what this is doing. So it's opening up and letting more light in. So if your office isn't super bright, or maybe your lights don't get super bright, they won't need to be as bright when you can go down to a 1.4 f-stop. I like the ZV-E10 because it's reasonably priced. You can actually often find them used for a little bit cheaper too. It can do 4K, although I usually just roll with HD. And it uses interchangeable lenses so you can get the perfect lens for you. And those lenses are just higher quality than cameras that have a built-in lens that you can't change. Also, it sends clean HDMI and it has a flip screen so you can easily just kind of check and make sure it's still recording and make sure that you like how it looks as you're talking. Just don't look at it though while you're filming, please. Look at the lens. And I just prefer Sony in general. They seem to have better features for cameras that are in their like mid to lower price range versus Canon, which... They do have some really nice cameras that do what we need it to do, but they're much more expensive than the Sony equivalents that can do way more for less money. So I'll share some links in the description so you can click and get whatever you need to get. All right, so I realized when I was editing, I probably should have demonstrated some of these lenses. I don't have all of them. I have a 24, which is what I use. I have a 16. I thought I had a 20, but I can't find it. Um, so maybe I didn't buy one. Maybe I was... I, I know I was trying to decide between a 20 and a 24, and I went with 24. So maybe I didn't even buy the 20. I can't remember. All right, so I'm going to put on the different lenses and just show you the difference between them. Just to make it easier to compare the footage between the different lenses, I have my 24 millimeter on right now, and this is what it looks like. So again, my camera is about three feet. Hold on, I got a tape measure. Let's see where we're at here. Let's get, let's get we're going to get official here. Whoops, bump my camera. All right, so we are at 30, about 33 inches to the front of the lens to where my, my face is. But how about the leg of the tripod? About 40 inches. The camera body itself is about 38. So if you've got somewhere in that, that realm, um, the, the 24 is a great option. So now I'm gonna put the 16 on so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so now the 16 millimeter lens is on. I haven't adjusted my tripod at all. So you can see how much wider this is. This would be great for closer distances. If you need the camera to be closer just because you don't have as much space, the 16 is a great option. And I wouldn't go any lower than a 16. There are lenses that are even wider, but they really start to distort and not look so great. So I do not recommend those. If I was using this as my lens, this might be okay. The only change I would make, and I don't want to change it because it's set up perfectly for my 24, I would angle it down just a hair so there's a little bit less wasted space above my head. But if you're wanting more of your body in the shot, this would be a great way to do that. All right, let me move it. So this is about where I would put it. Now, where do I put my tape measure? Here we go. So, from my face to the camera lens is about 28 inches. And if you're not in America and you use the measuring system that actually makes sense, <laughs> like millimeters and centimeters, why, what is the deal, America? Like, why will we make measuring so complicated? The metric system just makes so much sense. Anyway, rant over. To the camera body, it's like 32 inches. My tripod, which I, I had to position to where it, the back leg is like way far back. I could probably change that. And my desk has two levels uh, so that my monitors can be higher. But if it wasn't for that, my tripod legs would be a little bit closer together. So I'm just going to estimate the tripod leg would probably be about 36 inches away, somewhere in there. You know, and, and this is just an estimate. So even if you've got a really tight space, you could get it a little bit closer if you had to, and a 16 would still work. So now what I'm going to do is switch to the kit lens just so you can see what that looks like. Now I have the kit lens on the camera. And if you're wondering why it's so dark, I wanted to demonstrate the difference between a lens with a very low f-stop, a low aperture, and a lens with a high 
aperture. This kit lens can only go down to a 3.5 f-stop. And that's why it's so dark because it it's like the iris of, of your eyeball. It just, it doesn't open as much to let in as much light. All right, so I'm gonna crank up the ISO on the camera just to bring up the lighting a little bit so that we can compare the rest of the image. So now we can see how the other aspect of having a higher f-stop changes the image. If you look at the background, a lot of things are now in focus where before they were out of focus. And that's again, because the f-stop is higher. So right now it's zoomed out to a 16 millimeter equivalent. Let's go ahead and change the zoom a little bit. All right, so this is a 24. So now let's move it back to where I normally put my camera. Okay, so this is where I usually put my camera with the good lens on. And again, you'll notice, well, that looks even darker. All right, so now I've zoomed back to a 24 and you'll notice still the background is just in focus where with my lower f-stop 24 millimeter, the background is nice and blurry and out of focus. Now, the last comparison I wanna do is with a 35 millimeter. Now, this probably isn't gonna work real well because I don't really have enough space. What I'm gonna do first is zoom into 35 on this camera, and then I'm gonna switch the lens to a 35. And I, I don't have a 35 uh, 1.4, I have a 1.8, which is still really nice. And often you'll find the higher the millimeter that you go, the higher f-stop or aperture that you can go and still have a blurry background. So as you get into the higher numbers, a 1.8, even like a 2.8 can still make a really nice image because it's zooming in so much on you, everything else is still kind of blurred out. So I'm gonna zoom into a 35 just so we can see what it looks like with the kit lens. All right, so this is 35 and I didn't get the frame perfect because I really don't wanna jack up the way that I have my tripod set up because it's dialed in for my 24, but this is what it looks like with the kit lens at 35. And now I'm gonna switch to the, uh, the 35 1.8. So now I've got the 35 1.8 and you can see how much of a difference it makes having that lower f-stop. I actually would not use this for my setup because I'm just way too zoomed in. My head is huge and if I were to crop this in for a vertical video, like my face would be the whole thing, right? I would only use this lens if your desk is not against the wall and you have space to move the camera back, or if you have space to move yourself back, that, that is another option. But the whole point of this is to use it for Zoom calls and interviews and things where I'm at my desk. So I don't wanna sit like three feet back and not be at my desk. So that's why I wouldn't use this lens. But if you have space to move the camera back behind your desk, then I would use this lens. And you can use the kit lens for a little bit, but the f-stop doesn't go as low as these other lenses, which means the background can't get as blurry. So if that's important to you, then the kit lens is just a temporary thing until you find the best size lens for you. And then you can even sell the kit lens if you don't need it anymore. But it is good to have that in case you need a lens that can zoom in and out for other purposes. So I would just hang on to it. Now, a couple things to note, you're also gonna need a dummy battery. And what this allows us to do is plug into wall power. That way we don't have to use batteries and we won't run out in the middle of a video or middle of an interview, which that would just be horrible. So I'll link to the one you need for the cameras that I mentioned here. But if you have a different camera, just go to Amazon and search for dummy battery for whatever your camera model is and you'll find something. Real quick, if you're finding this video helpful, can you do me a favor and hit that like button? That lets YouTube know that this is valuable and they'll show it to more people so I can help more people make better videos. Thanks. All right, back to the video. And then you'll also wanna get a tripod if you don't already have one. If the camera's gonna sit on your desk, you can get a desktop tripod, which is what I use, and I'll, I'll link to a good option. But if you have space behind your desk, so mine's up against the wall, but if yours isn't, maybe your desk is turned and the, the end of it is up against the wall, so you might have space on the other side, you could get one that sits on the floor. Just don't go too cheap on the tripod because the cheap ones are really flimsy. Sometimes they just won't hold or it's hard to get them level. And a lot of times, eventually, they just give out and break and you got to buy a different one anyway. So you might as well buy right, buy once, okay? Now, I also just want to say don't use a webcam. There are some webcams out there that claim they look just as good as a camera like this, but they don't. So I bought one and at some point I'll do a comparison video just so you can see the difference, but it does not come anywhere close to what I can do with a decent camera and a nice lens. So if quality is important to you and you wanna look the best that you can, don't get a webcam. Next, what we need is what's called a capture card. So what this is, it's a little device where we run a cord from your camera to it and then it turns the signal into something that your computer can use to then be used as your web camera, as your camera for your calls. Now, some cameras can be plugged directly into your computer with a USB cable, and they have their own software in order to make all that work. 
But in my experience, they're often really clunky. Sometimes they don't work really well. And there's often some lag between the video and the audio, which is super annoying. And they're just unreliable. So instead, I recommend using a capture card. And the one that I use and recommend is the Elgato CamLink 4K. Now this thing is just plug and play. And in the few years that I've been using it almost every day, I've never once had an issue. There are some cheap options out there on Amazon, but try them at your own risk. I've bought a couple of them and they were not good. Even though it claimed to be 1920 by 1080, which is like an HD uh, ratio, it did not look right. Like it was compressing it or doing, doing something weird. I also didn't have the ability to, to mirror it, to flip it. Sometimes the computer could find it, sometimes it couldn't. So as I like to say, buy once and buy right and get the cam link. Something else you'll need to get is a micro HDMI adapter or a cord like this that has the micro on one end and a regular on the other end. Now what I have on my camera is a cage around the outside that has some areas where I can bolt things to. And I've actually bolted an adapter so that there's no pressure on the port where it plugs in. And then I just have this left angled HDMI cable that runs to the cam link. Now lastly, you're gonna need a good sounding mic. Don't do all of this work and get a great looking video only to sound like crap. Now you can get a mic that plugs into the camera because the cam link does send audio as well as video to your computer. Or you can just get a standalone mic that plugs directly into your computer, which is what I do. Now I did another video that you can check out where I talk through my recommendations for mics. So if you need a mic, go watch that video. But here's just a quick summary. You need to get what's called a dynamic mic, not a condenser mic. Condensers can sound really good, but only if you're in a really good sounding space that's been acoustically treated and doesn't have much background noise. You can use a shotgun mic, but only if you mount it properly. It needs to be really close, like as close as this, maybe like a foot max. That's, that's how they're designed to work. I just see people all the time put it on top of the camera and it does not sound good. You might as well use the built-in mic if you're gonna do that. Now, I wanna give you one bonus tip. You can use a free tool called OBS to record a high quality version directly to your computer. Now, where this comes in handy is if you're on an interview, someone else's show or someone else's podcast or whatever it's for, and they're the ones recording it, this will record your side of the conversation in really high quality so that you can use that for cutting it up into shorts or posting it on YouTube or, or wherever you wanna put that. That way you're not relying on them to send you video files. And often what they send is not so great quality because it's recorded over the internet. And especially if it's recorded in Zoom, it will not look that great. And it'll be a smaller size that you'll have to zoom in and that makes the quality even worse. So if you want that ability to record your side of the conversation in really high quality, this is the way to do that. So like I said in the beginning, you can do exactly what I lay out in this video and still look like an amateur if your lighting and your positioning and your background and all that other stuff sucks. So again, I put together a free training that will help you with that. And I'll send you a gear guide that lays out everything you need and has links so that you can pick up whatever you need. Just head over to glacierrockmedia.com forward slash studio and grab that today. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll catch you on the next one.